Recovering Laws Gems, we have taken a little bit of an aside uh, as we tried to plumb the mind of the Gonim and, and their significance. Uh, we discovered a, uh, a controversy about the use of Gonic material, and it was coincidentally that that controversy revolved around someone who was sort of a Gon in his own right, and we talked about that last week, someone who in a way uh, stood beyond the general system of time and space, so to speak, in terms of who you are and who you could argue with, at least in terms from his own perspective and the Pesachim that he issued. And we tried to delineate that when we spoke about the great Rabbi Yosef Rosen, the Rakhid Shover Goin, the Rav of the Chassidusha Kiwa in Dvinsk. And there was such a, um, an outpouring of interest uh, about the Rakhid Shover and about his shita and about, um, in general, where he stands and his method of thinking, his method of analysis, um, his, the appropriateness of using his approach for our own time, following him. Uh, so there was so much interest that was swirled that I turned to my very good friend, someone who is very, very bacant, as we say, in the Torah of the Ragged Shoba, and he was very happy uh, to answer the call, especially since it is something that's core of the I'm talking about Rav Agoyin, Rav Yisuf Gavriel Bechofer, who at the very tender age of, how old is it when you published that Sefer that was Hikish Roshim be Mesiftis Bechol Shitchei Ha'olam, that Sefer, the Big Day Sheish. How old were you when you published that Sefer? 28. 28 years old. And it was, of course, a collection of, of uh, Chidushe Torah. That was, um, I had the schus to, to actually own a copy um, autographed by the Machaber who gave it to me as a Matana. We were much younger. And I know that Rabbi Bechaf, I already knew from there that uh, Rabbi Yosef Rosen and, uh, was, was someone who loomed very large in his world and someone who could really hold forth in it. So <laughs> he graciously agreed, especially as the interest in the Ragged Shova is an interest in what he considers true Torah thinking and the right way to think about Torah and uh, an important thing. So he is honoring us tonight with his presentation. Rabbi Bechhofer, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and today we're gonna to look at uh, two uh, ideas from the Raga Chavar uh, concerning the Sugya in Barbasa of Chetu Ebed Chetu Ben Chorin. And uh, the idea of Chetu Ebed Chetu Ben Chorin is of course somebody who has once upon a time was owned by two masters. One master released him as a Ebed Knani. In other words, he's uh, Saraf not being Jewish. Now he's quasi Jewish. And then uh, he was owned by two masters. One master released him, one master did not release him. So there are two uh, major issues in the sugya there, which are discussed. And uh, the first one is if, he, uh, if he's allowed to marry a shibcha, on the day that he belongs to his master. And the day that he's released, he's a, he seems to be, it would seem to be he's a full Yisrael, because an Evan Meshuchar has a din of Yisrael in terms of all arayas, in terms of all permitted relationships and all forbidden relationships. And therefore, he would not be allowed to have a uh, non-Jewish uh, uh, wife, even a Shifcha, on the day that he is a Ben Chori. And the question is, what about the day when he is uh, an Evan? That he is, he is serving the remaining master which he has. So uh, the question is, can he have a, uh, a shivcha on that day or not? And the Ktsoy says that um, uh, he, he cannot. And he says over here, the, the Gabe Eved, if on the day that he is belongs to his master, he's entirely an Eved. And the day that he belongs to himself is entirely free and can't have him mishukhar, the chozer mishtabe. Then if we were to say it that way, then it would be considered to be that he is redeemed and then he's a slave again. That can't be. Because the release of an Eved is like the, uh, the sanctification of an object. Came the Chal Shachas to a Pukah. I jump. Once it takes back one hour, it cannot be fall off again. 
חצי שחצי בן חצי בן חורין, לא אין לו חצי עבד וחצי בן חורין, ואפילו ביום רב רבו עושה בשפחה. He's no more ever than half a בן חורין, and half an עבד. So therefore, even on the day that he is an עבד, he's really half a בן חורין. And therefore, he cannot marry a שפחה, he cannot have a relationship with שפחה on that day. And, but on the other hand, it's the other way as well. ואפילו ביום רבו עושה בשפחה, ויום מצו נאמר לעשות בסחורין, משום צד עבדוס שבו. Also he can't, on the day he's free, he can't marry a Bas Yisrael. Because it's not Avdus, which still exists in it. It's not Chayos Tambibol Lohan. So at the same time, he's an Abed and a Ben Chayim. So the question is, what exactly that means? How is a person be uh, 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 half an Abed, half a Ben Chayim? In terms of that it's not simple like two masters. When we have two masters, he's an Abed to this one one day, and Abed to the other one the other day. Why do we say no? It's not like he has two masters, one his master on one day, one himself the other day. No. On the day that he is free, he's a Ben Chori. On the day that he's an Ebed, he's an Ebed. And therefore, he's stymied at every opportunity. He cannot marry a, uh, 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 neither a Shifcha nor a Bas Chori. So uh, Reb Shemeshkop has a discussion of this, uh, of, of why this should be exclusive. So I'm going to Skip a little bit around here um, and go to uh, the next page here. Rabbi Bechafer, could you make the, the screen larger? It seems, yeah. I, it's, I, I'm, maybe it's my eyes, but I, I think probably the rest of us are also having a little bit of a hard time seeing it. Okay, so he says, uh, the Rabbi Shemin says as follows, over here, nearly the low cost of midday, provided the Evelomati Mishach, Mishach, and the Mishach. A slave can't go free and then become a, a mishubat again. Can't go free and then become a slave again. Somebody who is free always has to be free. Okay, of those If a master wants to like release an evet temporarily, say you know you're free for next year, and then I'm taking you back. So can't do it. There's no. Type thing as a remainder or a, a, a right over a free person. Once he's released one hour without any shurim, without any uh, remainder, so he cannot become mishubat again, over again. So um, I wrote here, even though there's another um, quotation marks, that's a mistake. This is my writing. This doesn't seem to make any sense. How can, why is it the case? Why should you say that Chelus is something which uh, uh, cannot be confined? Why can't it be confined? Let's say it's one day. Okay, I can't take him back from whatever Chelus he accomplished, which is one day out of two. But why does that affect the other day? Why should that be a uh, 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 why should it extend to the day of the mask? So, uh, Reb Shimon doesn't seem to give an adequate explanation. So, I, I wanted to explain this based on the Rocket Trevor. And the Rocket Trevor is, uh, it, it speaks uh, here about, it's from this uh, ghost in the, uh, on the Morn uh, of Uchim. Those, I'm sure Rabbi Kivalevich explained to you that uh, most of the Rocket Trevor's nomenclature term that he uses, the Nalamdas he applies, is based on terminology taken from the Moran of Uchim. And he applies the Brahman's terminology, which is philosophical terminology, to ideas of Lamdas. And this also is a manifestation here. He brings down here from the, uh, 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 the he actually talks about the Narvoni. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef, I just, just, um, I just want to make sure that our Olam, I paused it for a second here. So I just want to make sure our Olam understands what what is our quandary? So if you could just repeat it again, that they just for for my sake and for everybody else once again, that we know that there's a mahus of an evid that's chazi evid chazi ben chayrin. Um, Chazal speak about it at length. However, the question is, what is the the main thing that you're trying to to be yoyred in? Just just to re recap it just for a minute, please. The question is how exact how exact why should we say that chazi evid chazi ben chayrin 
is uh, do, uh, doesn't eliminate the Ben Chorin, why is the Lord Ben Chorin stretch into the day of Avdus? Why can we say it's just like the Bailus of two masters? Don't contradict each other. One day belongs to one master, the next day to the other master. Why can't we say that Cherus is like a another, is like a master? So this belongs to the master, meaning himself, one day, and to the other master, meaning his other master, whoever that is, on the other day. In other words, the question is why the Gemaras, the the Mishnah says that that he's not able to Lisa Shivchein Yocho, Lisa Baschirin and Yocho. You want to know why? At least. He, on the day that he is not an Eved, why can't he be Mary of Ben Chayron on that day? That's the essential That's question. Yes. And why on the day that he's a, an Eved, why can't he live with a Shivcha? Right? So b- before you get into the Ravid Shavar, I'm not recording this. I mean, d- doesn't the Gemara say because the Tzad Abdus is, is stopping? What does that mean? Why is that the case? Of course that's where the case is, but why should that be that way? That's a bit of choice. Why should it be that he cannot, that, that these two start him, uh, 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 con- afflict each other? Why can't they be? Why, why is the Tzad Avdus right. present during a day when essentially... Right, and in a, fact, according to the Hamid and the Gemara, clearly, according to Beis Hillel, it seems that that's not a problem. It's only according to the Gemara, the Gemara that Beis Shammai said, listen, he can't leave so she playing the Yochel, leave so she playing the Yochel. We're going to come back to that later if we have time. Right. So in other words, the question is really on, on the Gemara itself or on the mission itself, on the Brisa that has, why is it that the Eved is so, um, uh, why is he so locked into the situation where he can't move? Let him at least be able on the day that he is the Eved to live with a Shivcha. And when he's a, the day that he's a Ben Chayrin, he shouldn't, why is it that the Isra Avdus bleeds into that day, right? That's essentially your right. question. Okay. And, 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 and you're saying that although Rav Shimon seems to try to explain it, you feel that Rav Shimon himself has not really explained it well enough, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Right. Just so everybody should understand, I understand. Sorry for taking your time up with the Dover Push. I just want to make sure everybody understood what we're talking about. Okay, here we go again. Okay, so the, uh, he brings that, uh, uh, there's a quote from the Narvoni. It says, Hasman Melitza. Time is a metaphor. From the, of the continuity of one state to another state, which is constantly in movement. You cannot imagine or understand time unless you understand movement. No, there's no movement, there's no time. So that's the case. What is eternity? Eternity, Melitza, Mem Shech, Matthias, and Nimtes, Habilki, Mislahas. Netzach, that which is eternal, is a metaphor for that which is a continuity of, of, of a status which does not, is not move, does not, does not move, does not change. Lachen Yomar, Be'elu, therefore, we'll talk about things which are in Nitzchi, which are eternal. Sheinom, Bizman. They don't, they don't, they don't, don't exist in time. He says that therefore things which are not material, such as evidently malachim, and of course the Kodesh Baruch Hu, don't, uh, are, are, don't, cannot be described in time. So the Narvoni says a very interesting Kiddush here, that the uh, time and movement are connected. That which transcends uh, movement transcends time, and that which is uh, uh, subject to movement is subject to time. Now, um, so what's, what's, what is the, the log of trouble for this? Chasav said something that's we came with PZ, according to this, Dover the Ain Hefsek Bo, something where it can, something which cannot, which has no interruption. It cannot be interrupted, cannot be changed. Bain Bushum Nafkin of Kamas Manavarla, it makes no difference how much time passes over it. Lo Shaykh Bo as Man Klau. It's not subject, it's not subordinate to time. Came on seals enum cloud because it's uh, it's uh, 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 the, um, uh, the 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 reality doesn't apply to it. Time uh, In other words, time is something which moves and therefore is changes. Something which cannot, which not, which doesn't change, is not subject to time. Now, how what, what he is a very a very highfalutin idea, but he brings it down to a pra- actual halacha. He says. 
וכך גם בנזירוס שימשו, שאין בו גדר זמן. There is a special type of נזירוס called נזירוס שימשו. If a person accepts by himself to be נזיר שימשו, the Allah is just like שימשו, he is allowed to be מטאמין למייסים, he is allowed to, obviously, go and kill lots of people like שימשו did, but he's not allowed to drink any wine. But besides that, he uh, never can be מטיר נדר. Unlike a regular Nazirus, where you can go and be Matir, the Nether, a Chacham can come in and be okay, the Nether retroactively, and the Nazirus is null and void, you can never nullify a Nazirus Shimshon. Why not? Okay, uh, he says, Chayk Abba Nazirus Shimshon, Eshe Einbo, Einbo Begeder Zman. It doesn't fall under the category of time. We have Shad Levatlo Ulisholov Kimobo Lochal. You cannot negate it and, 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 and nullify it as if it never took, never took effect. So a Chacham, the way a Chacham is is the, once the, if the Nether takes effect at a certain time, the Chacham comes and says, okay, let's go back before that time. And let's say that that uh, let's say that nether is null and void because I'm taking you back to the time before. And at any time you're mati or nether, is mati nether. He really goes back in time and says that nether was null and void, and it's as if we go to the status quo immediately before the nether took place. But by Menzir Shimshon, that does it doesn't work that way. Why does it work that way? So says says the the uh, rugged shaver. Because the zero shimshon is doesn't have an end, it doesn't have a beginning. Since you can, uh, uh, by definition, since the zero shimshon is, uh, uh, is forever, as opposed to any other zeros, even if a person says that he's a nazir olam, he's a nazir forever. That means he's a nazir for uh, as long as he lives, and therefore he can revato that nether. But the zero shimshon transcends, just like shimshon God is in zeros before he was born. And it was in him, on him after he died. So, so too, there's no time, even for the, even though you said, I'm a Nazir Shimshon from today, that doesn't matter because once it takes effect, it's as if it's eternal. That's the definition of Nazir Shimshon. And now he explains a little bit more. He says, uh, So he writes also, Why does it work to nullify the nether? Anything which has no end, we say about Gersh Baruch he's ain't so. But that's a misnomer. He's not just an ain't so. Anything which has no end also has no beginning. And there, there's no, so no nafkamina in the amount of time which passes. Because it's for, for eternity. Again, Chacham can only be Matir once the Nether takes place, and he says, okay, let's go back to before the Nether took effect. It's as if never, there was never any beginning, because that which has no end also has no beginning as well. It's as if it was there for eternity. So it's a very big kiddush, but he's saying that that which, I become, that which is eternal, even though it has a starting point, but since there's no end point, that starting point is as if it doesn't exist. Why is that? Because anything which cannot change, it's not subject to time. It transcends time. And if it's just, it cannot, if it transcends time, there's no way to undermine it, to go back before it began. It's as if that time never existed. The very big finish. But that's what the Rogel Trouble says. And it makes sense. Because things which are eternal are not subject to procedures, which by definition are going to make them not eternal. Now, that's the case. I, I, I went on here to describe this. He says, uh, I say here, let's look at all, all the halachas of Torah, any one of them, even Hekdesh, are all halachas which have time, which, have, which are under the uh, jurisdiction of time. Uh, uh, Hekdesh also, you can be matur Hekdesh. Even if you're making something Hekdesh, at least going to be based. So you can be matur Hekdesh later on and say, you know what, I, I changed my mind. I'm not going to have a Hekdesh anymore. There's only one halacha in Judaism which we has, besides Nizon Shimshon, which is eternal. And that's Gerus. Once a person is a Megayer, he can't, there, there's no way to undermine a Gerus. Right? Even though a Gerus plays a Lusuro, 
He no. goes back to, he tries to go back to being not a gear. Wait, the, in the Shama of Israel and accepting the Neshama of Israel is something which transcends time. The Neshama of a Jew is Nitzchi, it's eternal. And that status of Neshama as being Jewish is eternal. And therefore, there's no way that you can go back and change your mind afterwards. Any other Allah in Judaism besides Nazir Shimshon and and uh, and uh, Eros, you can change your mind. Of course, if it has to do with somebody else, or Kinyanim, and you can't reverse that. But anything which has to do with myself, I can change my mind. It's subject to time, but not Gaius. So therefore, this is, I think is the pshat in the, in the translation, and that's the pshat in Reb Shimon as well, the Reb Shimon as well. Why can't Gaius? Why can't I never take off that din of Chetzi Ben Chorin? Because in that respect of Chetzi Ben Chorin, I am uh, became a Jew, and when I become a Jew. That's Nitzchi, that's eternity. Anything which is eternity is not defined or delineated or subject to time. And therefore, you can't say it for, it's on one day and off the next day. It's something which is always there. And that's why it says that there's no way that you could say that even though he's obeyed Rabbo Yom Echad, that on that day he can marry a Shifra. That's one thing which we learn from Shimon. So, uh, so, so in other words, that even though Chazal say what the Yotzi Poyal is, that's really a um, sort of a, uh, a compromised understanding. That really, right? In other words, this is just a Hanhoga that... Um, in that, other words, yeah, That the guy a... who owns him, the guy who hasn't yet freed him, should feel a Sipa Kanefesh. But really, this idea that Chetzi Chetzi, it's really a fiction. Right. So it, it happens to me that Yushami seems not to hold that way. Yushami seems to say that um, a uh, 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 that he is um, on the day that here I'll show you Yushami. Uh, <coughs> says it's my. It sounds to Yushami that you can. Mary, uh, uh, Kidesh Isha Biyom Shom Shell 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 Mare in Hoshim Kidushin, Biyom Shasmo, Hoshishin Kidushin, uh, 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 the um, uh, Yom Shasmo Hoshin Kidushin, Lokhena Mari Bikhi, Shemer Yokam, Shkets ever Kets of the Horn, Kidesh Isha Hoshim Kidushin, Kavasa Girish Hoshin Girushin, smash with that. From this, you shall know, again, uh, it's not Mukhok, as they say in uh, Maraponim. Says next paragraph, but it's uh, that those want to say the Ushami argues in the Bible and holds that um, you can he can marry uh, uh, a a Jew on the day that he's a Ben Chorin and a Shifka on the day that he's not a Ben Chorin. But the Lamar upon him says that no, it's not the case. Really, uh, he it is a uh, the Ushami just says of the Chumrah. But Mikra Din, what's he's that Jewish? According, according, according to your Hezber, I'll be the Ragged Shavil. Then Lechayra, if it's just a fiction, Chayshin Mishpat, but Geirus can't be Nishalik, right? Despite the fact that we say he's only a Chatzin Geir, but you're saying Chetzi doesn't make sense the same way it doesn't make sense for Chalokim in terms of Nazir Shimshon, then Lechayra should be Chayshish for Kedushin, even on days when he's Makadish, the day that we on Chayshin Mishpat call him an Evid, because, right? Right. So that's why he says he wants to say that it's a, a, a chumrah, the gemara upon him. And the chazal says that. Because we would be chayshish even on the days he's an eved for his kedushin of an isha who's a bas chayrim. Yes, we would have to, absolutely. Right. Is that is? is, is I mean, I, this and other than this gemara upon him, nobody speaks about this idea. No, we're going to see. We're going to see the rambam. Okay. So the other point is uh, the next point is the um, shita sa rambam, and that's the next column here. Ram Paskins, Mish Chetzi Abba Chetzi Ben Choyim Loyal Chakor and Pesach, Lo Mishal Rabo, Lo Mishal Atzmo, Achi Asa Kula Ben Choyim. So Mish Chetzi Abba Chetzi Ben Choyim cannot eat the Korban of Pesach, neither from his master nor his own, until he comes completely Ben Choyim. So the Rabbi argues him. See Rabbi Omar Bram Hod Lo Kal Hilchaso. The Mishnah Choyno, according to Mishnah Choyno, Oicha Mishal Atzmo. Uh, according to Mishnah Choyna, which we'll see in a moment, he can eat from his own Korban Pesach. The Pesach Kaya Kesem Mishnah Kamar Sasugasuk Nan Mishchetzio Eben Chetzio Ben Chorin. 
can't eat from his masters. Umar says, Misho Rabo lo yochal. I'm Misho Matsu yochal. I can't eat from his own. A hatani lo yochal lo Misho Misho Rabo. Says you can't eat from either one. Lo kasha can't be Misho Rishon akam with Misho Nachroina. Umar says, no, depends. We learn like Misho Rishon or Misho Nachroina. What's Misho Rishon or Misho Nachroina? Rashi says, to Misho Rishon, it comes to close to Beis Hillel. Before Beis Hillel reneged on their opinion, lo yochal Misho Atzmo. Can't eat from his own. Because uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the Chelech Avdus is not under his uh, uh, under his um, uh, under his jurisdiction, so he can't have his own Korban Pesach because he only has the right to half of it, so to speak. According to the Mishnah Chreina, since we can release him, he's like a free person. Let's explain that a little bit better. The, the, there's a mission which appears in many places in Shas, in many different contexts. That Basil said, and the classic example is not so much Korim Pesa, but the classic example is um, marrying Chetzi Eve Chetzi Ben Chorin. So Basil said, he married a servant himself one day, and he served his master another day. And Shammai said, What are you talking about? You can't marry a Lisa Shibchenacho, Lisa Baskoin in her Yoko. And if you can't marry anybody, then you'll never be married. And Lola told Liberal Shabbos, you saw the world's created for, for people to have able to have kids. So then it says, Chosu Basil Horus Kidibe Beishama. And so then you decide to Beishama, you know what? Okay, you're right. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to release him. And so therefore, this understanding is that like Mishnah Reina, it's as if he's released. Because Beshamay says, we have to release him. He still says, you know what, you're right, we do have to release him. So then that's as if he's already released. And therefore, he can have his own Koran Pesach. According to Mishnah Rishayna, that he can't be released, he can't have his own Koran Pesach. Because he only owns himself halfway. According to Mishnah Rishayna, that he's ready as if he's released, he can have a Koran Pesach. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry uh, to interject. I'm just thinking about it's such a, a crazy situation. Why didn't Hazal force the uh, the owner that still owns that half a sl slave to uh, uh, free him? And or and if he obviously there's some economic concerns, so just pay him. He'll be a free man, a free Jew, all the completely, and he'll be paid. For, the, the, the owner should be should be probably forced to free him. Right. I think this that's is too crazy. You're right. According to Mishnah Chorina, that's really Beisham. I convinced Basil that we have to compel the owner to, re to release him. The question is why Basil didn't think that way to begin with. You're correct that that's the conclusion of the Gemara. But the question is what did Basil think till that point? Your question is really on Basil according to Mishnah Rishonah. Okay, I don't think it's do... solvable. I mean, uh, it, it's a crazy situation. It's way too well, let, let, Let's see if we can solve it. Okay. So the um, the the, the uh, and then the like I said, there's several places where this actually because is a problem throughout Shas. Um, so let's go to the next page here. Okay, and uh, uh, I, I mean, I said in some place with Rabbi Chesed Ben Chorin Magidro. So one of the questions: How do you have a Chesed Ben Chorin? How many nations will mean Echad Yochid VeAchid Mechudash? Is he one ta, uh, species, one unified species, a new species? How they're preyed on, like a mule? Shavli Shikimayim Shulsus Chamor, even though it is obviously the product of a horse and a donkey. Kamacham Nechshavas He the Metzius Achas Chadasha. It's a new, new, new being. Or maybe it remains two separate entities in one. And it doesn't have any difference in halacha from some of in heaven, some of you 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 in heaven, but now it has both names. Till now it only had one, one name, now it has two names. As Rogachar uses very often. It says, um, uh, uh, um, it's only a 
fusion where the two parts are, so to speak, neighbors to each other. They are both intact. Uh, uh, the components of this fused entity retain their prior character. And the, uh, the, the fusion only made them like a combination. They're just close, closely, close neighbors. Odimar, do we say, Harezu Arkova Mizgis. It's a fusion in which everything is, becomes fused together and becomes as one. Perush Arkova Elima Kalil. The fusion completely uh, uh, eliminated. Eshem Advarim, the two names which we had. Vatsmusam and their original uh, statuses. Hashem Ehem Urkav Achayv Yitzchadosh, in which the new object has been formed. The Notzra Yechida Chadosha, now there's a new uh, unit. Shikula Achida, which is unified with Mosa in its, in its character. Kinakuda, it's like a point. A point, is, does a point, as we know in geometry, doesn't have any parts to it. Hashem Be'etzim Tifa, Enem Akabel Shalukah, which cannot be subdivided. Nafkinina Chakira Zu. Is Nafkmina then? Can he marry a chetzi ever chetzi ben So I, 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 it's like this. Without uh, to say outside, if you are chetzi ever chetzi ben chorin, it's like a prado. It's like a mule. It's a new birios. It's a new a new entity. Kava uh, mizgis. So it's like any other sul kav in Amiso. It's like just like a mamzer. Or Nassim, he, he's, a, he's a, a, a Jew with a deficit. He has a deficit in that he has this element which came from Chatsi, from Ebed. But he's not a Chatsi, Ebed, Chatsi, Minchorin. He's not half, half. He's this new entity. But if you hold that he's, no, it's our cover Shichnitz, that the two halves are still two halves, which are not fused into a new entity. So then, in fact, he can't marry anybody. Because the Chati Yavid part comes and conflicts with the uh, uh, Chati Bas Chorin. Uh, in other words, you can't marry even somebody of its own mean, of his own type. Because if he's he, both in the Chati Yavid Chati Ben Chorin, his Chati Yavid conflicts with her Chati Bas Chorin. His Chati Ben Chorin conflicts with her Chati Shivcha. So therefore, they're stuck. They can't do anything. So that's the question. Is, it, uh, 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 is the Chati Yavid Chati Ben Chorin like any other so-called in the Torah? Where we have a, 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 a new entity which has a deficit, or is it no? The two entities coexist in one in one person. The first side obviously gives us much more leeway than the second side, and that I think is the machlokus beishame beisila. Beishame beisila initially held that a chazi ever chazi min chorin is our kava shich mizgis. It's um one second please. I have ten more minutes, okay? Sorry. The chatzia um, v'chatzia b'chol as as a kavah mizgis, and there, therefore, like I wrote over here, it's like Ammonia Moavi. It's he saw his puzzle to call, but uh, but he was allowed to marry a basmino, so I mean the same type, and perhaps also just like Ammonia Moavi, be allowed to marry a gioras, be allowed to marry a mamzeres. He's one of the psulei kol in Amiso. But if but but beishamai was saying no, beishamai was saying no. He's a kavah mizgis shichnis. He's stuck. His chatzia and chatzia and chorin status doesn't merge. It's like oil and water; they can't be fused together. So therefore, he can never marry anybody. So therefore, according to Beis Bishama, it says Beisel, you have to compel a master to, to release him, because otherwise, he's never going to be able to marry anybody. And that Beisel conceded to Beisham at this point. So now the Rambam is a very very clear. The Rambam is saying. That it's accord, according to the first sad that they still argue on Beishamai, a chati ever chati ben is like any other Israel. He has a deficit, he has limited who he can marry, but he can bring Korn Pesach because he's this new entity. He's like a mule. He's like the Ammonium Wabi, they can bring Korn Pesach. It's only according to the second sad that holds that Beishamai said, no, he's our Kabashikhnis, and he's not fused together. 
he has two separate aspects that then he's stuck. He can't be a Gorn Pesach because he's not, he's not, he's not completely free. He's not completely free of heaven. It's the side where he wants to bring his own carbon is stymied by the whole side that he is a, 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 a Meshubah. The side that, that, that he's in heaven. The side that, the side that wants his, that his master should bring his carbon for him because in heaven is stymied by the fact that he's free. And the coin, every, uh, all the, uh, all, so it comes out according to the Rambam in all the cases where we have a Mishnah Rishon and Mishnah Chorina, this is the Mishnah Mishnah Rishon and Mishnah Chorina, and it's much more glad, if you think about it, than the other side. Because what the rival was saying, and what the other Mishnah was saying, not the Rambam, is that, is that according to the second side, that according to the Mishnah Chorina, since Beishami convinced Beis Hillel to, for, that he should be freed, like the question before, so as if he's already free. What do you mean he's already free? He's not already free. He's still in heaven. Okay, we have to release him, but he's still in heaven. Right now, we can't bring him Pesach. So, but the Ram, I'm saying, no, uh, yeah, according to the second side, according to the second side, he can't bring him Pesach. Because he's not free, and we just basically just convinced Basil that it's our kavah shichti, it's not our kavah mizgis. Therefore, of course, he can't be a korban pesach. But according to the first sad, the mishmi shoyna, then then he couldn't break a korban pesach. Worried the past and mishmi shoyna, which we don't. They could break a korban pesach because. Excuse me, uh, Rabbi Bechover, I I, uh, I I just don't I I don't understand how. If we're talking uh, at least in some sense about acquisition, because when a person is free, he acquires himself. If if there are two owners of something and one owner wants to make that thing hefker and the other owner doesn't want to make it hefker, then uh, that would be a problem. Uh, it couldn't become hefker because one owner wouldn't give up his ownership. So. Uh, why, why is there even a possibility that the first person could free him, could do that on his own? Uh, it, anything, it seems like anything that is subject to acquisition does not have, does not allow for that capacity for one owner to do something different from the other owner if it, it has to do with status. Well, that would be true. I, I agree with you if actually he was making him Afghan. It's not, not possible to have some object which is half Afghan. But here, it's just, it's, there, is, there are two parties. A three, but there are really three parties. Owner number one, mm -hmm. owner number two in the heaven. And owner number two is within his rights to bestow his ownership on the heaven. In other words, he's not, he's not actually being mafkirate. That would be a conundrum. How can we mafkir half an object and half an ob object not be mafkirate? But he's conveying the ownership on his part. He's the das, he's the das machne, and the evid is the das, is the das koina. Although it might have been required a third party, it depends on free and evid. But the evid is das koina, and therefore that ownership is being conveyed to the slave. So it's different than hefke. You're right. A mafke avdos yotzer ben koyin, but you and you probably not be able to mafke or two, and you would have to say that that not, does not apply in this case. That, that's a very valid point. That's it's different only he, over here because there is a coin there here. It's supposed to be making it. Happen. Thank you. So the um, so that is that is the sheet of some Rambam, and I think the Rambam, as I said, is much more meduyak. I want to bring up one, just one more point before uh, we end, which is um, this last page here. It's an interesting halachah and ilchus shayfer. And dragons, motius mino ve eno motius eno mino as as eno mino. And dragons who blow shofar can be moti and another and dragons. Tumtum eno moti los mino ve los eno mino. A tumtum can't be moti even another tumtum. Right? Then dragons has both elements, male and female. A tumtum we don't know if it's male or female. Tumtum shiniko efshi imotzi tzachav efshi imotzi in the cable. We don't know which one he is, so therefore he can't be moti even another tumtum, because maybe he's we're going to uh, maybe we can, we'll find out he's a zacher and the other the, the other tumtum is in a cave. I'm sorry, maybe we'll find he's in a cave and the other tumtum is a zacher. The chemi shechetz or ever chetz ben koren ain't no moti a few atzma. He can't even moti himself. She ain't tzad abdul shabo moti tzad chayr shabo. 
his Abdus part, tell me Moti is Chayus part. So the Kate said, Yates and Yechavaso, Yishma Ben Chorin should call. Yes, listen to my Ben Chorin is going to blow Shofar for him. Rabbi Manal Shokas of Tsar Hill. We name our Kos of Rav Gavi Misha Chetzio Bukhuli, Hain, the low dummy low non dragon is slow to him. It's not comparable. The answer should the dummy to him, Shane Moti is Mino below is Eno Mino, Moti will be Shachetzio ever Hule, then Moti if you ask him Shumhari Kos of Rav Gain. It really does, uh, he's saying, it doesn't make any sense. How is the Chesi having Chesi Ben Chorin at all like an Andreinus or Tumtum? He's not neither, not, neither one of them. Andreinus is, uh, is both. A Tumtum is Suffolk, which one he is. Well, a Chesi having Chesi Ben Chorin, what, what, what's his problem? Why can't he be Moti himself? So uh, he is, it's, uh, so I wrote here in Nate, uh, uh, and he says, you know, but maybe because it's similar. It's not clear exactly. Rabbi Amarach obviously has a great difficulty here. So he wrote here, Name Nam Yakushin, who's close with Savarama, Madurus Franco, Rebi, Saviad, Shagul Soso, the whole me. It says, not the chain me, but the whole me. So it's not like Andreas or Tumtum. It's a new Allah. It's not the Rebbe Mara's problem is that I can convert to Andreas, it's not all comparable. Franco's gear says, no, it's a new thing. The two of Ashamide, right? Uh, so it's not it, it, it's uh, not not difficult. Um, no, after the girls are saying, but even going to our girls, so that says the chain. Yesh mash remes with dukdekes hadjoga baramba. We can understand the flow in the Ramba. So pass about Andreas. Dave birio bifne atzma. Birio Andreas is definitely our uh, our cover means gits of male and female. We can see between Dave Suffolk, right? Which is a uh, we don't know what it is. Masayim chatsi ever chatsi bichor Dave vade zevze. And therefore, he can't be Moti himself. So, Andreas, because our cover Mizgis, can be Moti as Mino. The Tumta, we don't know what he is, therefore, he can't be Moti somebody else. Because he's our cover Shikhnis. He's this paradox in of himself. He can't be Moti himself. A third party has to be Moti. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Beckover. Rabbi Becker, we have to thank you, of course. And I think what we need to extract, I know you you have to run. Uh, you have a lot of Talmidim, who are Makshivim, and uh, Inyonim of Harbotsas Taira. But I think that what we need to, I think the Messiah here is that the Ragachover's ideas provided for you the, the key to uh, unlocking the mystery. And that you were able, although the Rakat Shavar himself, as far as your research indicates, did not speak about Chatzia v'Chatzia ben I mean, it sounds like something Taylor made for him to speak about. Did you find him talking about that? I, I honestly don't remember. It's more than 30 years ago. I don't know. I don't know. But what you were able to do, at least... Probably was, not, because I probably would have cited it. Chazok uh, on a Chavar, a young Chavar, the Mestama, he, he did his research. But I think what you are displaying for us is that the Rakichover's um, unique um, philosophical lumdus style that is beyond what others have done, different, can sometimes allow a, 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 a new understanding that uh, you are trying to, I, I think, sound the clarion call to studying the Rakichover because he can provide with that new type of look answers to questions that have bedeviled us for for many years and continue to and that sometimes you need that that type of thinking that only he could provide and that which is what you were able to do to actually apply it even right, whether he said it or not you saw yourself walking in the rugged shovers footsteps thinking like that genius in order to uh to answer these these issues correct yes well put. Thank you. And I think that is really part of why we have you here uh, for that purpose. And again, uh, Rabbi Becha for Sefer, the Big Day Sheish, is, I don't know if it's available in Eitzra Chochma. Is it available in Eitzra Chochma yet? I, don't, I have no idea. Probably not. I see. But there are still copies available, uh, <laughs> right? They can still be obtained. Yes, they still is, be there, obtained. They, is there, and I, again, it, it perhaps doesn't necessarily ring the same sort of um, practical bells as Erevin in modern uh, metropolitan uh, areas, 
but it definitely bespeaks of the type of thinking, the type of analysis, the type of uh, youthful exuberance and Avas Atayra that Rabbi Bechav still continues to, to uh, embody and permeate, it permeates through him. So try to get a hold of the Big Dejesh if you can. Um, I'm sure that even if you're not learning Baba Basra, uh, you will find it similar to the Kaivitz Haaretz on Yavamas. The Kaivitz Haaretz is not a safer on Yavamas, although it is on Yavamas. Rechon and Basraman's classic. I think you would say the same thing. It is very similar to the Kaivitz Haaretz, by the way, because there's different Agod at the end, similar to what Rechon and Basraman did, correct? Although your Agoda is, is of a different style, but it's a book that I think is, is tethered to Baba Basra, but in a way um, reaches beyond the scope of Baba Basra, as you can see from this piece. So Robert, thank you for giving us that, that justification and we'll uh, hopefully be able to, uh, uh, to respond with that, the, your Mizarazos uh, to, to plunge deeper and, and, and brighter and to continue in, in the best possible way uh, to be mamshik and the, the ideas of the, that great, great going. Thanks a lot, my friends. Um, Thank you.